The reading is from Luke chapter 24, um, and it's the story of the resurrection of Jesus. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Raymond, I remember years ago reading a book mm. with a question, Who Moved the Stone? Mm. But as you've been reading now, actually the question that is asked of this passage is, why, why do you look for the living among the dead? Right. And I wonder if that's not a question that we can sort of start and get into this passage a bit on Easter Day, and this Easter season. Yes, well, um, if you enter into the passage, mm. um, the fact is that the stone isn't there anymore mm. and that the tomb is empty. Mm. Now, the, 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 It's sort of immaterial in a way. It's immaterial, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's matter-of-factly stated. That, that, is, yeah. that is the given. Yeah. Yeah. That's the given. But the question is, what does this mean? Mm. Mm. Um, and the whole point of the, the messenger, the, the people in white, the angels, mm. 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 is that they've got the message of what this means. Just... Yeah. Angel does actually mean messenger, doesn't it? Means a messenger. It? Yes, we forget that. Yeah. These are these are messengers of God. These are messengers yes. of God. So what what is the message? Mm. The message it's, is that God. he is risen. He, he is, is not risen. here. Mm. 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 And so what? Yeah. So what? So but what? Um, that's already a, a, a whole lot to get your mind around. <laughs> um, it's, and it's pretty big. And it's pretty big because in the in the in the passage, it's a, it's a group of women who come to embalm the body with mm. various spices mm. who find that the body is not there mm. and they get the message and they tell it to the apostles who think it's mm. an old wives tale. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yes. Yeah, it's a yeah. wives tale. Yeah, yeah. an um, idle tale. An idle tale. Mm. Um, and Peter um, is the one who um, takes them seriously mm. and runs over to the tomb mm. to see for himself. And he sees that the tomb's empty, but that's where the passage breaks off. As a preacher, I mean, both you and I have mm. preached this passage many, many times. Mm. I often feel I don't really need to preach about it because the story is so powerful mm. in itself. And mm. in some ways, perhaps we just should just read it carefully, slowly, meditatively, mm. and sit with it just yes. as it is, rather than trying to explain or describe or all these other things. Yeah. Well, the trouble with trying to explain it is that mm. there aren't any human categories which do justice oh, to it. Absolutely. That all, yeah. all the human ideas about death or whatever mm. are suddenly exploded and then turned around. And just, there's just no, yeah, there's no way to, mm. to there's no way of describing it and no, nothing, yeah. to, nothing to fit it into, is there? Mm. Well, the way they used to do this in the early church, well, it, it's generally thought this is what happened is that on Easter Day they would do a pilgrimage, mm. people in Jerusalem, mm. to the site mm. of the empty tomb. Mm. And the celebrant would say, um, The Lord is risen. Mm. Mm. And the reply would be, He is risen, risen indeed. 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 So yes. it's just, in, in a way, reenacting the story, and you hope that the penny drops. And that uh, just mm. a wonderful act of faith. It is a wonderful greeting, isn't it? Yes. Easter greeting. The Lord is risen. Yeah. He is risen indeed. What else can we say? Yes. But it was particularly powerful both because they went to the grave site and, uh, and, and which of course is empty. Mm -hmm. 
um, said the words mm. year by year, and this mm. is how the resurrection faith was kept alive in the early church. And handed from generation to generation, mm -hmm. as the women handed it on to the apostles, Right. some who some who doubted it all. There are still Peters in this church, aren't they? Yes. Mm. Uh, but coming back to what we were saying earlier um, about simply reading the story or mm. reenacting it as pilgrims, I think what this says is that we've all got theories about what the resurrection means, but we have to keep coming back mm. to the original words and to hear that, and then we start thinking again about it. Because you can get tied up in your own ideas. Indeed. Mm. Let's just end, Raymond, with that great Easter greeting. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>